Hi there everybody, I'm Matthew Coddington from Roseville Park Marino Stud at Dubbo and today I'm going to run you through the etiquette and basics of junior judging or judging Merino sheep in general. Today we judged the New South Wales State Finals of the Junior Judging and the award was the Hugh Lydiard Memorial Trophy. It was a great honour for me to judge that um, national class today because um, Hugh Lydiard was a great mentor to me when I was a young jackaroo 30 years ago and he taught a lot of young jackaroos the basics and etiquettes of junior judging and we're hoping to continue that legacy on today and show you the principles that he taught a lot of young people in the 1980s and 1990s so that legacy continues. So when you're junior judging it's about showing your confidence and competence and your memory of um, the sheep you're judging. So it's very important that when you judge a sheep you don't have any clipboards, pens, paper or anything. Your hands are free to assess the sheep. If you're wearing a tie you tuck it into your shirt so nothing's hanging down in front of you and getting in your way. It's all about having the least amount of restriction and being able to judge and assess those sheep as you're judging them. So when you are given time start most judges want to run in and pounce on the sheep and utilise that time. The first thing you must do though is stand back and walk around the sheep and assess all. You're given four sheep in a lineup. So what you do, you walk along the lineup, you're looking at the overall structure and width and hindquarters of sheep, you're looking at the pastons and feet, you're looking at the top line and structure of that sheep, the front legs. You're coming around the front, you're seeing how much neck folds the sheep has, the width of the horns out from the muzzle, and how the front feet stand if they're nice and straight. So when you walk around that sheep, you do the full circle, taking in all those things. And when you walk along a line of sheep, pretty well 80% of your mind is made up on how you will place those sheep before you even open the first sheep because you're also assessing the tip structure and nourishment and things like that, the overall balance of the sheep. When you approach the first sheep to judge, you want to let the sheep know that you're coming there. You don't want to jump on the sheep and spook it so it injures the handler of the sheep. So as you walk up to the sheep, you stand back, you're taking in those hocks and pastons and that, and you just lay your hand gently on that sheep to let it know that you're there and you just walk up very quietly and you start from the mouth and work your way back in a systematic approach back through the body as you judge the sheep. When you go to open the mouth of the sheep you just use one hand. Most judges if they use two hands they're, they're... now when we're opening the mouth we're looking for straight teeth, a straight bite in the mouth um, they call it undershot or overshot if this is not in line and we're looking at the teeth first and then we run our hands along we're looking how soft that muzzle is on the nose and any purity we're looking for any black spots we check around the eye for any pigment we check the ear for any pigment and how soft those ears are and then we start at the top knot of the sheep and we open on the top knot and what we're now looking for is white uniform wool right throughout the sheep with good style, crimp and nourishment. We wanting the, and we were looking on all the points where that sheep could run into colour. So we start on the top knot, we look at the wool between the horns, we look at the wool on the back of the pole, and then what we do is we draw an imaginary line down the middle of the back of the sheep, because it's bad etiquette to open the wool down the middle of the back. And what we do, about a matchbox width from the edge of that line down the back, we then open the wool in three spots along the back. So we open here, and as we're going, we're just opening the wool gently with two fingers. We don't want to tear the skin on the sheep. You don't like your hair being pulled by kids behind you in class. You don't want to hurt the sheep and, and make it um, suffer from pain. So you just open the wool gently, and then as you just close it up. So you're opening there, then here, and we're looking for that nice staple length crimp, bright wool, the lock structure which is these staples here and how they peel off 
and we're looking for the nourishment and the ability of this sheep to repel water and dust. We're opening here. We're shutting it up as we go. And then we come into the neck folds of the sheep. So we're looking between the neck folds first because this is one of the points on a sheep. If they're going to show any colour, it'll be between the neck folds. So we're still looking for that white uniform wool. And then we move to the point of the neck fold and we just check on there because the wool tends to be a lot rougher and bolder in the crimp on the edge of the neck fold. Then we come down the forearm of the sheep and again, if it's going to be creamy or show colour, it'll show colour on the forearm. And along the belly line here, we're opening here. And then down this hind leg. Making sure the wool's still white and long. So when, when we follow those steps through, it's very basic. It's about 11 steps, so let's count them. First we walk up to the sheep, put our hand on it. We open the mouth. We look at the muzzle, the eye, the ear. And then we open the wool. One, on the top knot. Two, between the horns. Three, on the back of the head. Four, five, six along the top side of the body, seven between the neck folds, eight on the point of the neck fold, nine down the forearm, ten along the underline, and eleven down the hind leg. And then you move to the next sheep and follow that pattern in a systematic approach. So the idea, you're only judged while you're handling the sheep. And if you're worried you've got time left and you need to fill it in, please don't. If, if you follow this system and um, do it step by step and then just step away, um, place the sheep in your head and just think about the comments you were going to make during the oral presentation. And then when it's time, you'll get seven minutes standing. You'll get another three minutes when the sheep is upended. Now we're going to upend the sheep and look through the underline. Okay, so now we're moving through the underline of the sheep. The sheep has been upended, and it's the same systematic approach. You work your way from the top to the bottom. So again, we start from the muzzle. We can see more around his eyes. If we're worried about the mouth, we can look more at the jaw. And then again, we're looking at the wool through the neck folds down the forearm and then we lift the feet up and we're looking for any stripes or pigment on the feet and we ask our holders to hold those feet up thank you and then we're moving through the belly and again we're still looking for white bright uniform wool throughout the belly and underline of the sheep if it's a ram we're checking the pizzle for any colour or any injuries or cuts from shearing or something and then we check the testicles. We're just handling them very gently <laughs> and then moving down the hind leg. Still looking for that white wool and then out to the toes on the back looking for any more pigment or stripes or colour. And then we're finished, walk back. So it's a systematic approach moving down through the sheep. So the sheep are upended for around three minutes. You've got three minutes to look at four sheep in, national, in state and national junior judging finals. And then you'll get another two minutes to make your final um, adjustments for your order and placement of the sheep. So again, if you're tossing up between one or two sheep, just use a systematic approach to compare wool. You may compare the wool of this sheep to the wool of the sheep beside it to see which one's longer in the staple brighter in the staple. You may compare the wool between the neck fold of that sheep to that sheep. Again, to have that um, comparison between the two sheep to make your final placements. Now in junior judging, if you get the placement slightly wrong, there's a system called the Hormel slide. If you get 
place one and place two mixed up, there may be only a couple of points difference. So don't sweat it if you get the placements out of order. What you are mainly being judged on to start with is your handling and then your placement on the two groups that you will judge and then your dress, your oral presentation, your ability to compare animals and if you may have got the order wrong to the over judge, if you can um, convince them on why you placed one animal above another, you'll get extra points and it's all those little one percenters through what you do in your judging that can um, make the difference between winning, getting second, third or fourth. When you are then asked to do the oral presentation, you'll come out, you have two minutes. If you go longer than two minutes, you'll actually be deducted on marks. So you have two minutes to talk on four animals and compare those four animals to each other. Why you place sheep one over sheep two, sheep two over sheep three, and sheep three over sheep four. So when you're asked to come out and do your oral presentation, you will then have your tie out, your coat on, sleeves rolled down, boots polished, everything looking good. You'll be giving the microphone. You want clear, concise, loud, verbal communication to the overjudge. You'll stand to one side of those four sheep and you'll, you'll not read from notes because it's about showing your knowledge and memory of the sheep that you placed. And you'll stand in one place and talk to the audience. You'll thank the RAS, you'll thank the people holding the sheep, the suppliers of the sheep, and um, go through the motions of why you placed the sheep in the order you did. And then do that within two minutes, and then thank everybody and walk away. I'd like to thank Hollow Mount for providing this sheep today, which was a supreme exhibit here yesterday at the Sydney Royal Easter Show. And thank you, our handler here, Avalon. And thank you for watching. Thank you. I don't know.